I would think about it before going into the hospital, I would get really emotional just being there without him and by myself and without my kids. And then when I got to the hospital, I kind of like got this surge of strength. <laughs> and I don't know if it was like mommy hormones kicking in or what, but I felt like we were in it together and we were going to get each other through it. I was like probably 32 weeks when this all started. We started hearing about it from China. And I was thinking, oh, it'll never get here. And I have a really good immune system, so it's not going to affect us. Um, but then when things started getting really bad and they were predicting the surge and the spike and the hospitals were just like getting so overwhelmed, I started to kind of panic a little bit just because I, I was due right when all the hospitals started to get overwhelmed. And 150 hospital workers in the Boston area have tested positive for COVID-19. There are worries that the hospitals don't have the tools and equipment to protect their workers from sick patients. Every day we were reading stories about um, 100 cases of coronavirus in this hospital and that hospital. And then they started changing all the regulations as far as um, who was allowed there. So that's when I started to actually panic a little bit because I was thinking, um, I'm going to have to deliver alone. Um, I've never been away from my other kids. So the day I went into labor, it was six o'clock. I was making dinner. Um, I don't really have much of a labor. It's more like just have a contraction and then have a baby. <laughs> so as soon as I had a contraction, I waited for a second one, which was just a couple minutes later. And I was like, oh, we have to go now. So we all loaded into the car. They all dropped me off at the front door. Um, I kicked the door open with my foot because I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> Made my way up to um, L&D and they were like, okay, yep, you're very much in labor. And then the plan was to FaceTime with my husband um, after the kids went to sleep. So the kids went to sleep and when we finally got on to FaceTime, he was in my arms. There were no visitors allowed and I couldn't even get up to get myself a drink of water. They make you kind of just like stay in lockdown just because um, I asked them actually if there was coronavirus on the floor and they said yes. And then I kept telling the hospital staff, um, I want to get out of here as fast as possible. I don't really even want to stay the night, but by that point it was so late. So they allowed me to just stay the night and then leave the next morning um, with the condition that we brought him to the pediatrician for his weight check and his blood work. So we did all of that and I was really lucky and happy to be able to get out of the hospital. I was there for the birth of our first two, right at Lindsay's side, and not being there this time was hard, but I didn't want our kids to be in the hospital exposed or with other people watching them that might expose them. But I got to go, you know, 12 hours later, the following morning, I was there with Lindsay, so it was fine at the end. Mm -hmm. I'm a primary care doctor. I'm an internal medicine specialist, um, and I work at Beth Israel, which is where we had the baby. I plan to go back to work some weeks from now, and. It's hard to know what things will look like then and what the hospital will look like and where they'll need us. I feel like it's a real blessing to be on leave, obviously to get to bond with Nyan and kind of be with the family. And also in a way to feel like I'm, you know, the whole family's safer because I'm not going into the hospital every single day. But on the other hand, it's been very weird not being part of what all my colleagues are doing and being on the front lines. And I say, well, I'm kind of on the sidelines right mm. now and I don't really know how it's going. I, I like that I'm, on, that I'm not in the mix and yet it's also kind of, I feel like an outsider. I feel like I was a little bit empowered by being by myself, even though it's not what I would have wanted. It's kind of just what had to happen.